they're saying, I, I'm going to give an analogy here. The same way, the same as Jesus was to his disciples, so is the Holy Spirit to the church. Everything Jesus was to his disciples is what the Holy Spirit wants to be to you. Now, now here's another difference. Jesus was with his disciples. The Holy Spirit is in the believer. So in essence, if I go to if I go to First Corinthians chapter six, um, yeah, I think it's been all way down to about verse nineteen. It says, "Know ye not that your body, your body, your body, is the dwelling place, house, where God lives." So the church is still mobile, cause when you move, it moves. What that song said, just like that. <laughs> so, so you are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. So here, so, so he's saying here, he's saying here, now, now you're going to receive power, dudamus, explosive, energizing, energizing power. After the Holy Spirit come upon you, now then it says you're going to be witnesses. Say witnesses. Okay, we're going to deal with that. You witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and all Samaria, and up to the utmost parts of the world. So how do we actually serve? Let me read a few things to you. Lord, I want to get this first part down real well now. The level of your anointing would never rise above the level of your submission. Hear me very carefully here. You're not seeking an anointing. You're seeking Jesus. Because he's the one that anoints. I'm not seeking a gift. I'm seeking Jesus. I'm not seeking a calling. I'm seeking Jesus. I want to get this down pat here. Because sometimes being, being, being out of balance causes other things to enter in that throws us off. Okay? We are to seek Jesus. Everything else is going to come with seeking him. So, listen, the level of your anointing would never rise above the level of your submission to the things of God. Now, that's, then I got and. You hear the second part too. And to the person God has given you to attach yourself to. I believe that one of the things that draw back on the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, we don't understand this word submission to or the submission of. It's all about order. It's not belittling. God is a God of. There's no confusion in him. Zero. I believe that the fact that the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit has been restricted based on the submission to the things of God or submission to the person of God that you have attached yourself to. You know what, you know what, I've been preaching a long time, so <laughs> we'll say it again. You know, I just got, I got some hind legs. Now, brother, they waited too late in the game. <laughs> too late in the game. Listen, your breakthrough from God, you receiving answers from God, the manifestation from God, is based on your submission to the things of God and to the individual person of God you have agreed to attach yourself to. Okay? And every person of God is not a tyrant, but they serve with love. Jesus was a servant. Listen to me. I am a servant. That's it. Servant. Servant. I serve. And every, 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 every message is from a servant. I can't create messages. If God doesn't give it, I have nothing to say to you all. I, I, I remember this right here that happened. Uh, sister, well, I probably remember this. Uh, I was passing Panola, and, uh, and uh, I said it all week. I did my due diligence, but nothing seemed to, to click. If you've been preaching, you know what I mean. Nothing seemed to click. So I'm struggling. I Struggling ain't the word. I'm struggling. We ride down to Panola in our, in our minivan. And sister Walk sitting over here and the kids in the back seat sleep. They don't know I'm struggling. 
I'm, I, I done studied now. I, I'm struggling. And, and, and nothing seemed to add up or to make sense. So, so we get down to church. I'm still struggling. He's smiling, but I'm struggling. We grit about it, but I'm. They sing song, but I'm. Amen. So I made up my mind. I made up my mind. I made up my mind. I made up my mind, Brother Cortez. I said, now, you know, when the, when the, when the, 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 the deacon turned it over to me, I'm just going to stamp and say, I ain't got nothing. We might as well pray and go home. I made up my mind to do that. The moment I got up, the Lord said, this is what I've been trying to tell you. If it doesn't come from God, I have nothing to say. Because I'm a servant under him. I'm an under shepherd. Okay. So, so that, that, that's a side journey. But, but, but I, I, please get this down pat here. To be trusted with authority is based upon your submission to authority. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to go in. We gonna, no, 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 that's, that's okay. We're going to argue our point. We're going to argue our point. Unsubmitted authority is very dangerous both to the person and the one you're trying to minister to. It would not be represented well. We as the church can only operate properly under delegated authority, which means a representative of and power of attorney to act on the behalf of. Uh, uh, exclamation point, period, go right there. Without him, we have no authority. In other words, no right to function on God's behalf and no ability to bring deliverance on God's behalf. Well, praise the name of Jesus. You've been given authority. The key is, are you operating properly with the authority that you've been given? Okay, 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 okay. That's okay. Authority means delegated power. Here it is. I want, I want, I want you to get this here. I want you to get here. It means to set in order. <laughs> I got another one. To establish order. That's the third one. Maintain order. You know who has that? Every believer. So there's something in your atmosphere, in your territory. It's up to you to put it in. No, no, no. It's you. It is you. Why? Oh, you, you've been given the, you've been given, listen to this now, you've been given the authority of the right of the privilege from God for you to set things in order, to establish order, or maintain order. It also means the right to control, to govern, dominion, and the character's word here, his territory word, his territory word, jurisdiction. Okay, you get that? Jurisdiction. Because you, where you reside, have authority over where you reside. Where I reside, I have agreement with the authority being given to us so we function properly. Okay, so if you marry, look at your wife and tell her, thank you that we have shared authority. Look at her and tell her, you got, we got shared. And see, some of you do so. Lord, have mercy. And I'm going to start pointing at people in a minute. I said, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. If one could put a thousand to flight, the Bible says, two put. So, so when you agree, it just don't double. You go to the tenth power. So nothing should be coming into your residence unless it has permission from you. Satan can't stay there unless he permitted to. Now, now if you if you if you if you well well you know in years don't want to receive it, there's some young college folks that's gonna get this. Some young folks gonna get this here. 
because they're going to know when they go sign up for something, I got authority. You say, no, God says, yes, I believe God. Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's go through this. Serve so with power, serve so with power, serve so with power. Listen to this. Those are legal terms to express what has been given to us as the church. There can be no order without authority. And the church said, all right, watch this. The rest of the church said, <laughs> no, no. Things get chaotic and out of order because there's no establishing of authority. I heard this old man, old priest said one time, I'm just trying to hope you. <laughs> he meant help you. You know what I mean? Not, not, here, here, I want you to catch this phrase. Catch this phrase here. This is, this is, this is a revelation that is going to bless you. I don't care what you're dealing with. I want you to get this right. Listen, listen. Once my understanding of authority is clear, hear that now, my response to situations of life will change. Once my understanding of authority is clear, how I respond to the issues of life it's going to shift because I'm not going to put up with what I don't have to put up with because it's clear. I don't, I, I don't have to be poor mouth because my understanding of authority is clear. don't have to put it with demonic expressions because my authority is, I don't have to belittle myself because my view of authority is so one of the things that happen is the fact that once you know who you are, can't anyone else get you to become what you're not? See, see, the reason the reason that we don't respond to everything is because it's not us. <laughs> Glory to God. No, it's not you. You respond to stuff when you don't know who you are. Come here, Bob. Bob, he, he, he ain't moved. Brother Eric ain't moved. Why? He's not Bob. I'm not talking to him. He said, I get rid of Bob's wife. Look at me, just. He's trying to wonder who Bob is. So there's no response to what is not you. When they talk to feet, that's not you. Want to put you down? That's not. Don't respond to it. Once I understand my position of authority, I view things differently. Several things I want to I want to get to you with the understanding of authority. Understanding of authority. Now this is going to bless. This is going to bless. In Matthew chapter eight, verse seven, Matthew after chapter eight. Because no matter now, Jesus at the end of the Sermon on the Mountain now. And 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 turn to Matthew chapter seven. I mean Matthew chapter eight. Look, look at verse seven. So it, well, it, kept, it says it said that, that, that he went to Capernaum in chapter in verse four. Then verse seven it says, and Jesus said unto him, the centurion came to him and told him about his servant being sick. Okay, and so and so so Jesus says to him right here in Matthew chapter seven. I mean chapter eight, verse seven. Jesus said unto him, uh, listen, I will come. Here it is. He, he, he gives Jesus an issue with this servant. Come and heal him. Jesus says, I will come. Now, I can set up shop right there. You can't tell me if you have an affliction in your body. He's going to tell you, I'm not coming. When he told him, I will come. He's no respect of persons. He responded by saying, I will now, it would have been different. He said, well, you know, let me think about it. Let me pray about it. Let, I don't know if that God will or not. Or not. He, no, no. He didn't say any of that. He said, I will, will, will. If you're born again, you don't have a situation that God won't respond to. If you're not born again, when you respond to salvation, you become his child.
So whatever you think you're dealing with, he want to deal with it with you. He said, I say, will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy. I don't know this is where we got this bad language from or whatever. I'm not worthy, Lord. Well, Jesus made you worthy. One of them old prayers, you know, they used to pray when I was a little kid, you know, and I knew my dad prayer. My dad was a deacon, you know. You know, so, uh, uh, this morning, my dear Heavenly Father, we need being in body bow like a bull rush in the morning. Oh, Lord, your poor, weak, humble, unworthy servant. You know, don't you know the devil was, was shouting and Jesus doing like, why don't they learn who they are? They can come bold before the throne of grace. They belong to me. They are son of the most high God. But we only did we only did that because that's the best we knew. So the centurion says that. He said, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. But, see, we stop. But notice the understanding of authority with the centurion. He said, you don't have to come. But he says, speak. Now, now, he, now he, 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 I want to get this. I, I, I noticed this the other day. He didn't say speak a word. Lord have mercy. Now, now, we're going to with this. He says, speak the word. Wait, 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 wait. Now. You didn't get this yet. He says, speak the word because the word fit that situation. Oh, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. When he says, speak the word, he said, I'm going to give you a rhyme of word. The written word don't apply, but a rhyme of word, one has been inspired by God, impregnated with the power of God. I'm going to give you the word, and this word is going to bring deliverance. So when you go through something, you don't you need the Lord have mercy. Because he has a word for every situation you're going through. Just stand God, praise the Lord. What's the word? What's the word? What's the word, God? What's the word? Because if you give me a word, victory's in the word. I was supposed to get excited to the end, but... Uh, He said, I'm a, I'm a man. He telling Jesus, I'm a man under. Under. I understand. If I say to this one, go, he. Go. I tell him to come here, he. If I say do this, he. So I understand authority. You don't have to go to my house. But your word and authority will get to my house. You don't have to come and look at them, but your word has already reached them. Psalms 107 verse 20 says, uh, says, says, says what, what, what is it? He gave his word, and his word what? delivered us. I done got hot now, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So we're we, we dealing with serving with power. Serving with, with power, with, with power. Being under authority blesses position when we understand properly. We are blessed from both ends. Those in authority, watch this, serve those under them. Did you get that? And those under authority pray for those over them. You pray for them to serve well. Because if I'm in authority, I should serve well. It's not entitlement, it's serving. And sometimes we misuse authority and we build empires of self-worship with statues that remind us of how important we were instead of focus on Christ and his death for us. I, I, I know y'all like saving statues, but listen, 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 listen. Why would I worship a statue when I got a living Jesus? 
thank you. He did his part. Bless God. We roll on. We don't be a monument in past victories and worship them. God has moved. Okay, amen, amen, amen. I want to get past just number one, okay? Watch this here. Human contributions are never to compete with Christ, but should point people to Christ. I don't care what you've accomplished. It doesn't matter to me what God has elevated you to. It should point people that Christ did this for me. I've been entrusted with this from Christ. It's never about self-promotion because I understand authority. All right, watch, number two, number two, see number two. Number two, the, the giving of authority. Now, tell me the, the book of Luke, book of Luke, the giving of authority here. Uh, Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, uh, Luke chapter 9, it's going to bless you here. Luke chapter 9, watch this here. No, 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 what Jesus said, what Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Then Jesus called his 12, 12, you know, you've been following me, I need, I need, I need something, I need something. I need you, I need to send you on an assignment, uh, but before I can send you on an assignment, there are certain things that are needed before the assignment. Hear me very carefully. I'm calling you to an assignment, but there are certain things you need before you go on the assignment. Okay? I've called you to an assignment, but you need certain things for the assignment that I don't want you to go without it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, you, you with me. I've given you a, a calling, but the calling is not to fulfill within yourself, so I need to give you something for the call. Okay, okay. When I work with Jim Motors, when I work with Jim Motors, it, it blessed me that, that if I had to go to, that sometimes I had to go to Detroit, especially during the uh, year of negotiating contract year, I'd make all these trips to Detroit. I could, I could probably get a call Friday evening and say, you know what, you got to be in Detroit uh, uh, a sunny evening, check into the Friday in Detroit, go to the Pontchartrain Hotel, we got meetings in the Joe Louis Arena, or go to Solidarity House. I can't say no. They would send me an electronic ticket. Watch this now. But I never went to Detroit without what I needed to get to do or to get to Detroit. See, they would send me an electronic ticket, but I need cab fare. I need some money to eat. We call it per diem. Then I need to get back to the airport. Okay. So then it wasn't just the ticket they gave me. It wasn't just the assignment they gave me. They gave me the other essentials for the assignment. See, I just didn't go to Detroit just to be going because it's my assignment. I waited on every the essentials for the assignment. So they were also have me a pre dim cab meal fare. So when you get here, we don't want you to worry about nothing but your assignment. We don't want you to be distracted. We don't have other things on your mind. We, go, we even give you a phone card. You remember we had that? A phone card. This one had cell phones. You know, he had this little card. One eight, you go to, go to the pay phone, 1 800, and you put the number in. Then they, all of a sudden you can talk to your wife. You know what I mean? Didn't have no cell phone. But the assignment was I need you in Detroit. The essential was everything I needed to get to Detroit. So God tells him, I have an assignment for you, but it's not for you to fulfill within yourself because you need something for the assignment. Did that make sense to you? Now, now look at this right here. He said, "Call 12 disciples and, and, and say, say, he gave them power. Say power. power. And say authority. Power. Now, now, this is very important here. These are two different Greek words. One means ability, the other one means right. Exousius and Deutimus. Deutimus is the explosive ability. Okay, okay, that's Deutimus. Exousius, or exousius, some call it, it means the privilege and right. They needed both of them to serve well.
They couldn't serve completely with just one. He gave them both. He said, I'm going to give you the privilege and the right, and I'm going to give you the ability. You may ha- See, don't go out because you have the right to lay hands on the sick without the ability. Well, I got the privilege to, but do you have the ability to? I have a right to walk up to this podium, but do I have the ability to lift it? You see what I mean? No, I don't. But if I have both, it makes a difference. Notice what he gave them the ability and authority for. Not the Lord over people, but to bring deliverance. When God has filled you with his spirit, it's not for a self-show. It's to bear fruit. It's not to let somebody know, I'm in, I'm in bed. Go, go, yeah, Lord, is it? No, no, no. Your shout is the lowest manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Nobody get delivered out of your shout. Nobody gets saved out of your shout. They get emotion out of your shout. But where's the power? I'm the shout. Glory to God. So he's saying here, before you do anything for me, there are two essentials that are needful. Listen, because he says, I'm going to give you power and authority. And then he says, where to be used? Over a few, some, a select. All demonic forces. You serve with power because you shift the atmosphere of your territory. There's so much reverence for you that they come around you, they're going to notice something different. Because you set the atmosphere. They're not going to come around you just, just yelling and cursing at you. They may start it with, you know, just kinda, you, know, you know, we just don't talk like that. You know, we grown folk, you know. Uh, uh, my dad don't talk to me like that. So let's just use some words. So we have a lot of respect for each other. You know what I mean? You have no boys around here. You, you have no kids around here. I'm sure all your kids in school, at home, or in college. Ain't no one around here. So we got some kind of respect. And I'm going to show you how I want this thing done because I'm going to show you respect. Now, when you mess it up, you let me know how you want to be treated. But I'm going to set how I want it to go, but then you're going to rebuttal against that. So sometimes I made to just kind of like try to get, get a little help and meet them. I made to deal with you like this when I just talked to them. You may, so, see, you don't want to listen. You will be tried until you establish order. Yeah, yeah. And don't act like them because somebody that's watching don't know who's saved and who's not. So he says, over all devils, demonic influences, demonic oppression, demonic possessions, and to cure diseases. If you're going to serve with power, understand the power that you bring to serve. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> wow, oh, you, this is you. Jesus called the 12, and he's calling the church now. Yes, you. Why, oh, you. Nobody but. Look at me like I'm talking to you. Smile like I'm talking to you. This is you. Because, see, once I understand authority, I view life differently. Well, maybe maybe I need to give some examples of that or whatever it is. See, when I understand authority, listen, listen, you don't run the railing for railing. You bring the blessing. Well, why are you letting them get over on you thinking over on me? 
God got this? They think they are. But God got this. They think they're ahead of me, getting over on me. They think they got the advantage of me, and, and they skipping all over me. No, no, no. I'm just going to smile and just shout and give God praise. Why? He got it. Because, see, human efforts can't block what God has ordained. They thought they had Joseph. We're going to do away with his coat. We're going to put him in a pit. We're going to put blood on it, take it back to his daddy. So the wild animal has killed him. So instead of killing him, we're going to put him out of the pit. And we're going to sell him to the Ishmaelites. Never had to be worried about him again. He having these old bad dreams. We're going to be bowed down into him. Who do you think he is? Mr. I'm about to say this on Mr. Big Stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> y'all man, we're going to do you know, Y'all need to be saved. Y'all need to be saved. Y'all need to be delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Who do you think y'all? No, no, no. But, but see, they, they, they thought that they could kill what God had ordained. So you get courage and encouragement in this here. They can't block God's favor. They can't take God's hands off of you. They can't block God's path for you. Oh, you ought to be shouting right now. See, see, see they can't stop where God want to take you. They want to talk about you, just give God glory. They want to scandalize your name, give God glory. They want to allow you, give God glory. They try to block you, give God glory. God will create a situation that only you can handle. He troubled the king because he needed the anointing on somebody in prison. When does a king go to prison to get an answer? <laughs> I got a problem in my kingdom, but the anointing is in prison. Oh, Jesus. I got to go get the anointing from prison to bring it to the palace. They can't block what God <laughs> They can't block what God has for you. That's why when you go to work, you're cutting a jig. They can't block what God has for you. Don't matter how hard they try, you just keep cutting a jig. Oh, God, I praise you. I worship you. I bless your name, God. I'm going to serve them with power. God has more doors to open than what they're trying to close. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. I'm glad I came today. I'm glad I came today. Amen, amen, amen. So works of ministry is to set people free from demonic influences, sickness, and disease. This can't be done from human efforts alone. The manifestation of the finished work of Christ what has the church been called to do is the antidote or the answer. We receive the right, hear this now, we receive the right from heaven. Now, next we're going to bless you. We receive the right from heaven and the ability of heaven. You didn't get it, you didn't get it, you didn't get it, because you would have been shouting if you understood it. You receive the right from heaven, but the ability of heaven. You ain't got it yet. You ain't got it yet. You ain't got it yet. Let me, let me close up right because you ain't got it yet. Let me, let me close my little stuff up because I got 10 seconds. I will say this again here. You, you didn't get this. You receive the right from heaven, but the ability of heaven. See, see, you're getting it now. You're getting it now. See, see, you're getting it now. You're getting it now. Understand? I don't care what you're facing. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what's around you or the situation or circumstances are. You have the right from heaven. 
and the ability of heaven. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right Robert, you may need to help me tell him this because it's not clicking yet. It's not clicking yet. Yeah, one more time, one more time. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what, what's around you, what's confronting you. Remember this. You have the right from heaven to deal with it. But you have the power of heaven to back you up. So the enemy can't stay there because you have the right from, but the ability of. Sickness can't stay. You have the right from, but the ability of. Lack can't stay there. Poverty can't exist because you have the right from, but the ability of. Now, 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 now we have getting it. We have, we have getting it. But I, I want you to meditate on this. See, let me give you an example. We're close. You remember seeing the Lion King? Lion King? Uh, what was the little cub named? Little cub? Little Simba. 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 You remember when Simba went, uh, went where he was supposed to go in, in, in the pride land? All those hyenas got around him. And so, so Simba trying to roar. You see me? You're getting it out, right? <laughs> He's trying to roar. To scare off the hyenas. See, see, he had the right, but he had no ability. He was on his own until his help came. He kept trying. He kept trying again. But he didn't know. Jesus. Woo! <laughs> Oh, glory to God. <laughs> he didn't know his help that came. Simba had arrived. And when he opened his mouth again, they didn't hear that weak meow. They had a loud roar that made the enemy shiver, that made the enemy tremble, and made them run as in terror. The power of showed up. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. The love of my soul, Jesus. My elder brother, Jesus.